I'm going to try and survive the next 100 days in Hardcore Ark Survival Evolved. However, there's one major difference. Each week, the game difficulty increases by 10, making Scorched Earth an even greater challenge. If at any point in time I die, it's game over. Here's where it all begins. In the middle of a scorching desert, I knew I didn't have much time before I was a Sunday lunch roast dish. So I had to move fast, collecting resources to get some tools going. But then I spotted this Jeboa, thinking this would definitely help us along the way. So I punched its lights out and fed it some berries. From there I continued working on getting more tools and weapons. By this time I was dehydrating and I needed to find water ASAP. Fortunately, a water source wasn't that far away. I was saved and was able to quench my thirst. This place seemed like it was a good spot to set up camp. I moved on collecting resources, crafting a set of cloth armor and structures for a little shack. By day 2, I had racked up a whole lot of levels overnight and equipped with a bow and some arrows, I felt a bit more adventurous. I was on the lookout for a suitable mount. This Morella tops would do. I whipped out my slingshot and started shooting it with the stones I had on me. After a few shots on it, I managed to knock the Morella tops out. However, I noticed that there was a raptor nearby. Taking no chances, I charged at it with bowlers in hand and trapped the little fella. Quite unfortunate for him, as there were two really angry doeheads after him. You know what? I'll be seeing you in the afterlife, buddy. Oh, but that's not all. While waiting for the Morella tops to tame, I went ahead to tame a parasol. Something that I could actually use and ride with. From there, I went out exploring as I needed a better location for base. Ah, uh, yes. This would do. I'm gonna set up my tent right here. Sweet. It was day three and I started this day with a little quest. I needed a dino for protection. Something that was a little speedy and could get us a whole lot of meat quite easy. Fortunately for us, there were some raptors in sight. Now that was easier said than done. Nah, I'm just messing with you. It's still early days. Everything seems a whole lot easier than it should be. Besides, I had Pamela with me. We had a special power, which we used. And those little screams, they got confused. Didn't know what hit them. Started running like headless chickens too. And that is the opportunity that I needed. Took it down with a bolo and some stones with a slingshot. Got it some meat from a capro that I took out earlier. And I also went ahead and took out its partner. Got some little goodies from that too. Back at base with my prize catch. I decided to make things a little comfy for me. Went ahead working on some piping. Now, this is more like it. Water right by a door. Um, what are you doing here? Please just run along, little buddy. Hey, what about my world? What about it? Ah, I see. You're from that kid's game, right? That is not true. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. Well then, let's check it out. Ah, tell them more about it. Today's sponsor, Hero Wars, brought to you by Nexters. There's a character to suit everyone in Hero Wars, from cyborgs to aliens, vampires, and cute little furries. For instance, there's Chubba. He's an awesome tank who literally devours his enemies. But there's Celeste. Now this is real S-tier stuff. She can switch between a DPS dark form and a healer light form which makes her useful in any situation. By the way, from February 13th, you can gather soul stones and skin coins for three amazing heroes with new romantic skins that can also boost their stats. Power up your team with Amira, Jorgen, and an all-time favorite, Kira. Hero Wars is a world of six unique modes, more than 300 guild war servers, and 100 million players. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and five awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars right away? Too slow. The answer is in the link in the description below. Play Hero Wars now. Hmm. Where was I? Ah yes. Day 4 I began working on my base. What I didn't realize is that I was still on scorched earth. Why you'd say is because you can't really build anything other than thatch and adobe. Or else you'll overheat. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. Completed my build in wood. Well, as I've said, you'll overheat. What a scream camps. Ah, oh, yeah. And so, I had to spend the rest of the day turning my wit to your base into thatch. 
just great. Alrighty, so day five started out with me collecting resources to get some things for base. I got a forge, some storage, and a whole lot of other things as well. I also had some scrap metal on me, so I put that on the burn. I then went out to collect additional metal. Back at base, I managed to craft a smithy. By doing that, I was able to craft some metal tools and some desert cloth armor. I just didn't have enough resources to complete the set. Crystals is what I needed. Well, off I went in search for some crystal. I knew where to get it, of course. I just didn't think it was a good idea at that time. And yeah, I was right. Luckily, I had cheese puffs and we just made it. Just made it. Well, at least we got some crystals, right? So the previous day's battle with the Sabertooth, I thought it was really OP. And I wanted to get that on my side of the team. So I went out on the lookout for a Sabertooth to tame. Lucky enough, we were able to come across a few of them. Unfortunately, they were accompanied by a whole lot of Screep-like dinos. Yeah, we had some terror birds and a whole lot of other things in and around the area. And so I had to bail for that time. As I was dehydrating and needed water ASAP, had a little drink of water and refreshed my state of mind and went back into the battlefield. This time I only had the saber tooth to contend with. I was able to bowl of them and take out the saber tooth that I didn't need and then went off to the saber tooth I wanted to tame. After a couple of bowlers and a couple of tranks, I was able to knock down the saber tooth and got it some meat and waited for it to tame up. Day 7, well this started really early on in the morning as we had some Christmas drops near our base. So I had to go and check it out with cheese pops. We got some cool little items from that and then later on went out getting some levels that I needed to unlock the saber tooth saddle. Wouldn't be able to ride it otherwise. After completing that side quest I decided to go ahead and bowl some base defense for my base. Yeah I wanted to prepare myself for what was coming in the future days. So I went ahead and crafted a couple of wooden spikes and placed that around base. Day 8 started the same as day 7. Early in the morning loot hunting for those Christmas traps. Though this time around it proved to be further than I had expected it to be. However we got there safe and sound with not much trouble and got some juicy loots from that. I was planning to get some gacha crystals on my way back to base but then I spotted this a tech rex and by the game's difficulty it was quite a decent level at this stage so I was quite tempted to tame it and so I did. I opted to use height as a vantage point shooting the tech rex from the back of my saber tooth. I must admit but it was quite a tricky situation, though we were able to manage it quite effectively. And within a few minutes, I was able to knock out the tech rex, fought off the baddies, got it some meat, and just waited for it to tame up. It was day 9 and I went out collecting resources and I needed a whole lot of resources because I was planning to upgrade my base to adobe. A lot stronger than thatch and would definitely keep us cool in this weather. So off I went collecting everything that I needed and crafting all of the adobe structures and by the end of the day this is what I had created. Quite a beauty, isn't it? A little cabin in the middle of a desert. It was day 10, the day before the difficulty changed from 1 to 10. And I thought it would be a good idea if I'd go out and tame an Archie. Just so that it would help me with the days ahead. And I knew of a great spot to find some. And so the quest for an Argy was on. I just had to get through a whole bunch of little screeps. From Carnos to Sabres and through Scorpions. Finally getting to the RG that I was about to tame. The thing is, it was a low level and I knew it would be an easy tame. I just needed to trank it as fast as I could in order for it not to escape. Within a few tranks, I was able to knock out the RG and fit it the prime meat that we got from the Carnos earlier on. While on my way back to base, well, I spotted this little body right here, close by. And of course, I just had to have it. So I tamed it. Oh yeah, it was day 11 and this, my friends, was the day our difficulty rose up by 10, making it max level 300 dinos. Of course, I needed to go straight ahead to find a dino that would be in line with the difficulty. Stronger tames is what I needed, so I went out preparing to tame a dino by crafting a taming pen. Although whilst doing so, there was a sandstorm and so I had to wait for that to pass. Once that had settled down, I went straight out to find a 
dino to tame. Just my luck, I happened to spot a decent level raptor. Jack raptor, that is. And that was an easy tame, of course. What I had to do was use my bowlers, and I had a good set of taming gear with me. So I tranked the raptor until I knocked it out. But it didn't end there, as I still had that taming pen with me. And I didn't want it to go to waste, so I placed my taming pen down. And uh, what I found next was just simply unbelievable. A really high level tear bird. Well, I tried to kite that into this said taming pen. The funny thing is, um, I got it into the taming pen. Just that the taming pen didn't work. And I brought a whole lot of problems with it. We had ankies and terror birds to get rid of. I tried my best to take out the rest of the dinos that I didn't need in order to tame the uh, terror birds. Yeah, things weren't working out. So I eventually had to take all of them out. The good news is we got some levels from that. Day 12, I wanted to check out those gacha clauses and also to test a few things. I fed them a whole bunch of coal and mistletoes and in return I got some really cool crystals. Got some really awesome loot from that too. Although, I needed to sort out my water problem. I went out collecting some of the resources needed and crafted a Furby. Now that will allow me to craft a canteen. I had hoped that this would do the trick. Yeah, if only I knew back then. It wouldn't work. RIP! It was day 13, yet another early morning start, as there was another Christmas loot drop nearby, so I had to go and check it out. Got me some cool stuff from that, peeps! Anyways, later on that day, I decided to feed more coal and mistletoes to those gacha clauses. Yeah, we needed more of those gacha crystals. Whilst waiting for that, I decided to go ahead and tame an Anki. So I went ahead tranking it with as much trank arrows as it needed to get knocked down out and well got it some berries and waited for it to tame up while waiting for the Yankee to tame up I went ahead and decorated my base with all of those decorated loot that I got from the gacha crystals looks pretty neat I must say the day 14 I went out for a metal run with my newly tamed Yankee considering I was able to farm a whole lot of metal I needed more forges to smelt it so I had to go out collecting the resources to craft a few more refining forges yes Yes, that will do. Day 15. I went out scouting for a stronger dino. It just so happened that I came across a high level die wolf. The best part is it was all alone and there was nothing to distract me from taming it. I charged at it without even thinking and trapped the die wolf with my bowler. I then proceeded to trank the little fella but of course it had quite a lot of torpor. So I had to back away before the die wolf got out of the bowler trap. I had to keep a close eye on it though as there was still the bowler cooldown to deal with. Once that was done, I swiftly went in for round two. Yet again, the die wolf broke free, but this time I was determined to knock it out. Finally, I did. Now, just to get it some prime meat. Ah yes, it was day 16 and I began with collecting resources to craft the better dino bench. This will give me the ability to craft a dire wolf saddle, which I went straight for it. After gearing up my dire wolf, I spent the rest of the day leveling it up by collecting XP buffs and chomping on some dinos. I also needed to get some obsidian. This would help me with crafting the skizzers. Why would I need that, camps? Well, I wanted to prep for the SS nanny as soon as I could. I was off with another early start collecting some of those Christmas loot drops. I knew this Lamentia would come in handy. Though, the previous day while collecting obsidian, I spotted a really cool Argy that I wanted to tame. With the extra resources I had, I crafted a harpoon launcher and got a few net projectiles too. These should make for an easy tame. Back at the spot where I saw the Argy, there were a few unwanted screams. With my dire wolf, we just shredded everything, leaving just the to tame. I had to trap the RG twice with a net gun before knocking it out, getting it some prime meat and then waited for it to tame up. While waiting for the RG to tame, I thought I'd try my luck with trapping a tappy. But yeah, that wasn't going to happen today. Now that I had a decent flyer, I could travel further, so I spent my time loot hunting, trying to find as many drops as I could to upgrade my armor and weapons. Yup, I went for those gacha crystals too, a whole lot of them. 
Well, 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 looky what we have here. A freaking max level RG, peeps, and a perfect mate for my RG. I just had to get it. This time, I didn't want to take any chances. I had to prep a taming pin for this. I then had to find a good spot to place the trap down. And then I had to try and kite the RG in. The only thing is, I was in the middle of a sandstorm. Now, this made things pretty crazy, but I pressed on and managed to trap the RG in. I couldn't do much in the sand storm of course i just had to chill in my tent and wait the storm out when the dust was settled i continued with tranking the yaji and knocked it out searched for some prime meat and of course i had to wait for it to tame up Day 20, I spent my time breeding my Argies. I needed some spares just in case things went south. It was day 21, difficulty change. The max level dinos should be around 600. Oh boy, this is what we needed. Well, I wanted to take a look around to see if I could find anything interesting. And man, oh man, did I find something. A level 580 thorny dragon. I quickly prepped up a taming pen and raced back to the spot kid out the area and place the taming pen down from there i carried the thorny dragon into the taming pen found a safe spot and proceeded to trank the old spiky i must admit it did take a while but after some time i knocked the bugger out and of course i had to go out and search for some prime meat and then well just waited for it to tame up it was about that time to check on the wife and trench. I had an RG and quite a lot of points were pumped into speed. I also equipped the Valerian Reigns from the better dino mod and I had the dino candy which increased the speed of my dinos. Having all of that, I thought I had a fighting chance. So I scoped out the area and went for the first egg I could find. Nothing great but a level 300 would do for now. Without much time to think about it, I snatched the egg and flew out of there like my life depended on it. The wyvern was hot on my tail and followed me for quite a distance before losing interest and buying me time to increase the gap. Yeah, I think I should be safe. Day 23. As you may know, I have a wyvern egg and I needed to prep up to hatch and raise this egg. Firstly, I needed to go and find a deodon. Secondly, I needed to tame it, which I did. And thirdly, I needed to craft a whole bunch of standing torches in order to hatch this wyvern egg. And that too, I was able to do. Now, I just needed to wait for my egg to hatch. Day 24, finally my wyvern had hatched. Now I had the task of raising it. This is where the deodon comes into play. Enabling passive heal made raising my wyvern a breeze as wyvern milk was not needed. I just had to sit back and make sure it had enough food. I then decided to take out my thorny dragon for a little spin, totally destroying everything in its path. It was a fun way of collecting meat. Day 25, I went out for a little metal run with my Anki. And for the rest of the day, I decided to go out and get more of those gacha crystals. Later on, I had the pleasure of opening all of those gacha crystals and finding that oh so juicy loot. Look at that. Totally amazing. It was day 26 and I decided to go ahead with prepping up for my main base build. I needed a Dodicarus to collect resources and a chemistry bench to craft the adobe requirements super fast. So off I went to tackle these tasks. Not too far from base, I found a decent level Dodicarus, picked it up with a Myagi and took it back to a safer location to drink and knock out this Dodicarus. Got it some berries and waited for it to tame up. While waiting for it to tame, I went out with my Wyvern to collect some of the the resources that I needed to craft a chemistry bench. The thing is, I needed a whole lot of clay to get the adobe structures for my main base. And to get that, I needed to collect a crazy amount of resources. Luckily, I had a wyvern with me. With its special ability, I was able to collect a boatload of cacti. For sand, the dodicarus was available and sorted that problem out. I just needed to combine these resources in the chemistry bench to get some clay. But first, electricity was needed. A and some wiring should do the trick now just have a look at this just glorious later that day i decided to go out for another metal run 
It was back to the Wyvern Trench with my very own Wyvern. So this time around I was pretty confident. I was in search for a higher level Wyvern Egg, something that could help with the next difficulty change. The search took for what seems like hours, as there were no good eggs around, taking on some of the Wyverns too, just because they got in the way. Eventually, I spotted an egg that was decent, not a crazy level, but it sure was higher than mine. Seeing as this was the best I could do at the time, I grew grabbed it and flew off into the sunset. Never to be seen again. I'm kidding. I'll be back. Day 29. Ah, oh, you guessed it. I went ahead hatching and raising my wyvern. Ah, oh, you're such a cutie, aren't ya? Just look at that. What a beaut. Oh yeah, I also had to get it some meat. So I went for a little meat run. Day 30. My wyvern was fully grown. Cobalt was the name. I thought it would be a good idea to get some levels for cobalt. Starting out by taking on some of the lower level screeps just to get those first few levels. Then working our way up to the top dogs. Actually, it's one of the best ways to get a whole lot of levels. And fast. Taking on some of the wyverns, peeps. Now that's a great strategy. Strategy. You know what? I think we're good for the next difficulty change. Ah yes, day 31. Things were starting to get a bit messy now and I didn't want things to get even more crazier before grabbing the artifacts. I thought it was best to get that done as soon as possible. I took off with my wife and in search for a Thala. I searched far and wide for a good level. The thing is, things were looking pretty bleak as I kept on finding low levels until I spotted the little diamond in the rough. Quite a freaking awesome level it was. So I picked it up with my wyvern and took it over to my taming pen, where I was able to trap the thyla and started tracking it until I knocked it out. I gave it some cooked meat and waited for the thyla to tame up. And waited. Yeah, still waiting. And then I waited some more. Yeah, you guessed it. Waiting. Eventually, late into day 32, the thyla finally tamed up. Over the next two days I went out in search for another Thala, a mate for the Thala I tamed previously. And of course you know how long these things take, but this time around I didn't really find that high of a level Thala. But it was good enough to do the job, I just needed to drink it and knock it out. Well, wait for it to tame up. However, I knew how long this would take to tame. So I set myself a side quest. And that was to farm up more gacha crystals and collect myself a whole lot of juicy loots. Just so you know. I did get the Thala tame. Days 35 to 37, I spent my time breeding and raising my Thalas. I seriously had no idea what to expect in those caves. All I knew was, it was some pretty crazy times. The dino levels at this point was totally madness. I had to prepare myself as best as I could, getting an imprinted Thala and one that had the best stats out of the pair. By day 37, I had bred the Thala with the stats that I was looking for. So for the rest of the day, I took the Thala out for a little draw right getting it as much levels as i could to get it ready for those cave runs okie dokes day 38 39 and 40 was spent collecting the artifacts for the final boss fight much to my surprise these caves seem to be a walk in the park but i guess it's best to be over prepared than under one thing i could say for sure is that my thala was a beast destroying everything and anything at the end of it all i was able to grab all three artifacts with ease the artifacts of the crag destroyer and the artifact of the gatekeeper Ah uh, yeah, here we go! The next few days I focused solely on working on my main base. Now this was actually phase 1. I had a bunch of ideas for this build, but of course, time is off the essence. By the way, this build was an inspiration from one of the pictures I had seen some time ago. Anyways, I had to collect huge amounts of resources and crafted for what seemed like a million adobe structures as I had no idea what this build needed. Basically, I just went with the flow. By day 45, I had this magnificent military-like work of art. Looks really good. Well, as you may know, I have a new base now. However, there's the old base with all of my stuff. 
So I guess you're right. Just move it to the new base then. And that's exactly what I did. It was moving day. Moving all of my stuff from the old base over to the more new and permanent base. It was day 47. And with all that grindy grindy business the past few days, I thought I'd take a laid back approach today. So I went onwards and grinded some more. Collecting some metal and then ending off the day with placing some of those oil rigs I had back at base. Now this should take care of the oil shortage. Holy cow! Peeps! Is this jet super duper insane? I tell you why. While I was out and about, I spotted this amazing megatherium. Just take a guess what level it was. Hmm? Oh yeah, a level 1040. That's just madness. What a perfect dino to tame before the next difficulty change, don't you think? So I scooped it up with my wyvern and flew the megatherium over to my taming pen. I then cleared out the area and got myself ready to tackle that megarific torpor stat. If you must know, this took forever to do, but eventually the megatherium had to go down. Now, it was all about the waiting game. Yup, you guessed it. I just camped nearby and waited for the Megatherium to tame up. But just look at those stats. Simply amazing. Later on that day, I went out with my Megatherium and got a whole lot of gacha crystals. Yeah, a whole bunch. Ooh wee, it was day 50 and I had made it here alive and in one piece. To celebrate, I had all these crystals to open. Just think about all that juicy loot I can get from them. Man, is this so freaking awesome? Just look at all of these loots. It's amazing. Day 51. It was time for yet another difficulty change. And upgrading my wyvern seemed to be a pretty good fit. I ventured towards the wyvern trench with the hopes of striking gold this time around. Searching every nook and cranny for something extraordinary. Alas, I had found the one. Man, there was no time to waste. I grabbed the egg and flew straight to base. Once at base, I began working on a little hatchery. Crafting a few ACs and opting to use the SS windmills to generate power. But for some reason, I couldn't get it to work. You know, I thought these SS windmills didn't need wind to work. Oh well, a good old Jenny should work just fine. Day 52. Of course, mate, I had to hatch my wife an egg. I was so looking forward to this. In fact, I was so freaking excited. I was just so, so... Huh? What the freak happened here, man? What's going on? Why is this 300? I thought I got 1,900 egg. What's going on here? Darn it. Jeez. After that freaking horrible news, well, I went back to the Wyvern Trench just to see if things were messed up. I searched for another Wyvern egg, and this time I found a 1,300 egg. Not as good as the 1-9, but uh, it's still good. Day 53, you guessed it, back at base, hatching my Wyvern egg. Ah! Now this is much better. This is what I love to see. I like that. I like that. Day 54 with my new wyvern, the Green Lantern. A perfect fit, I might add. We took to the skies, but not before smashing a few screeps. Man, was this so freaking OP. Anyways, I needed to get some resources. We needed some oil and then went over to the sandy part of the desert where we took some of those uh, mantis out. We needed some organic polymer. And for that, my peeps, I had to craft an indie forge. Time to get cooking. The next few days, I spent my time working on a very cool project. It was about building a greenhouse on top of a pillar that was not too far away from base. But then the project grew even bigger as I thought I needed to build a bridge to get to the greenhouse. Oh yeah, my dinos and I had to collect a whole lot of resources and craft a ton of structures. Let's not forget about placing them and at the same time trying to make everything look good and neat. However, after completing this build, it gave me a sense of fulfillment. Well, as you can see, this looks so darn freaking fantabulous 
Woo! Later on, day 59, right up until day 60, I went ahead crafting the rest of the bits and bobs needed for the greenhouse. One thing to mention, because I was using the greenhouse structures and all the other jazz there, it was so freaking hot in it. And I was overheating. So I had to uh, get some ACs and place a Jenny in there just to go inside my greenhouse. How crazy is that? But anyway, I had to get that done. I also went ahead and worked on some piping. I started piping all the way from my water well to the greenhouse. I must say, this was quite a difficult task. But I got it done. It wasn't pretty, but we got it done. The good thing is, with the SS mod, we can hide all of that dirty work. So, uh, we're still good here. Okie dokes, it was day 61, yet another difficulty change. This time around, I wanted to tame a mantis, a really high level mantis. The thing is, I just needed to prep up for that. And to do so, I headed off into the sand dunes of Scorched Earth, where I went in search for some death worms. Why? Because I needed those death worm horns. So we took out any and every death worm we could find, collecting those oh so juicy death worm horns. Yeah! So, I had found the mantis that I wanted to tame. I picked it up with my wyvern and took it back to base, trapped it within the taming pen I built for it, and well, I also needed to craft some bug repellent. Lucky enough, I had already prepped up for that. We had a greenhouse and some crop plots with some veggies, and I was able to get that bug repellent in no time. All I had to do from there was to feed the mantis those deathworm horns. Fortunately, this was an okay tame didn't really have much problems with it. Although, I did try to trap it in a tighter space. Well, that worked too. It just took time. A whole lot of time. Because on day 63, that's when the mantis finally tamed up. From there, I got it at saddle and, well, took it for a little joyride just to see what it could actually do. However, its stats left much to be desired. Day 64, well I went out loot hunting, trying to find some loot to upgrade my weapons and armor. And for some funsies on the side, well I decided to take on a titanosaur. Yeah, it didn't stand a chance really. So we'll cut to the chase. We simply just annihilated it. Like seriously. Toodles! Considering those loot drops didn't really help us the previous day, I decided to go ahead and get a whole lot of gacha crystals. A crazy amount. I really wanted to see some really cool things from these loots. And well, later that day, I had the opportunity to open all of those gacha crystals. It was so satisfying getting all that juicy loot. It was simply awesome. I love it. Oh yeah, I sure do love my loot. Alrighty peeps, it was day 66 and I wanted to try and tame an acro. Now this was going to be a bit of a tricky thing to do. One, because of its levels and two, I didn't want to die. Really, I didn't. Anyways, I prepped up a taming pen and some gear to tame this thing, placed down my taming pen and proceeded to kite the acro into it. Luckily, I got it trapped there within the first try and then tried to start the taming process and that was by doing some damage to it. I took one of my low level ascended pump shotties and began shooting the savage acro and kept on shooting the savage acro. I then tried chopping the savage acro. Once again, I kept on shooting the savage acro, but this time with a primitive pump shotty. And nothing seemed to be working. It wasn't going into its defensive position for me to freaking tame this thing. I kept on trying and trying until I got its health way too low and decided to just step back and take a break, let it heal for a little while. And that's when I returned back to base, defeated and ashamed. What a creep. Day 67, it was back to the savage acro. Somehow it managed to escape my trap. But never fear, I always had backups. So again, I got the acro trapped into my taming pen 
and began the taming process. This time, I went for an even higher level pump shotty, hoping this might make a difference somehow. I continued this for quite a while, and yet again, nothing seemed to happen with this freaking dino. It was doing my head in. Plus, this was going on for so long that it destroyed the taming pen and got out. That was the final straw. I couldn't take it anymore. I was simply too frustrated for this. And so I made the executive decision to abandon this quest. Yeah, maybe on another day, Camps. On day 68, I was out and about with my wife and just browsing. And that's when I came across this interesting guy. A 1700 Kano. I just had to have it. So I picked it up with my wife and flew straight back to base. And that's where I placed the Kano in my taming pen. I then started tranking it. And of course, you may have seen this had a huge amount of topo. So it took a while. But eventually, I was able to knock the Kano out. Once it was knocked out, I got it some meat and waited for it to tame up. Now that's the thing with these dinos these days. It took a really, really long time to tame up. So much so that on day 69, my Kano had finally tamed up. Jeffrey was the name. At first glance, it seemed like an OP kind of creature. Something that I would use in my boss fight. But then, after a while playing around with Jeffrey, something weird happened. Happen. It's that. It just got messed up. I guess it's the sole terminal for you, Jeffrey. Ah yes, day 70. I went out to farm up some resources. Whoops! You better watch out for that, Cams. Ouch! That hurts! Anyways, I went out to do a little metal run and at the same time I collected some crystals. Sweet! The next two days I did some more work on my base. Phase 2. This is where I tried to neaten things up and added in a few bolts to make my base a bit more accessible. I started with adding a floating platform for my wyverns to chill. And that was done by using pillars and ceilings, finishing it off with some adobe railings. I then worked on adding a walkway for my base, as I kept falling off the sides and it made things quite difficult to get around base. And when it was all said and done, this is what I ended up with. Pretty cool stuff. It was day 73 and I think it was about time for me to start coming up with some sort of army for the boss fight. I mean, I was cutting it really close, I didn't have much time. Anyways, I went out looking for something to tame and on my radar was a Thyla. Luckily, I was able to spot one, a decent level one, 1400. So I grabbed it with my wyvern and took it to my taming pen. That is where I trapped it and then I began tranking it. Tranking it until I knocked it out. I had to go back to base to get some meat for it. And when I got back, I fed it to the Thala. And yeah, you know the rest. I waited. I set up camp nearby and waited for a very long time. Until the next day, in fact. That is when the Thala tamed up. Alrighty, alrighty, it's day 75. So this is what I planned to do for the boss fight. I wanted to have at least half of my army being Thylas and the other half being Megatheriums. The Thylas were sorted. I just needed to find a male Megatherium to start breeding. Guess what? I did! Brought it over to my taming pen at base with my wyvern and began tranking it. This Mega had 80k worth of torpor, so I knew it was going to be a long one. After Wasting a million Trank Arrows, I got the Megatherium down, got it some food too, and waited for it to do its thing. If you know what I mean. Day 76 to 80. Yo man, it was coming down to the business side of things. I started breeding my army to take on the final boss. I was also in two minds here. I didn't know whether to go for a full army of Thalas or just Megatheriums. Or even to go with my initial plan. So I went ahead breeding enough dinos to go with any of my ideas. What made it really easy to do though was using the SS Nanny. Now this was seriously a godsend. However, I had to get the fuel to actually power up the SS Nanny. Honey is what was needed. I opted to go for the SS Beehive. Grabbing some honey and farming a crazy amount of rare flowers made it possible. From there, I continued breeding and raising my dinos for the next few days. Here's the thing. I had a lot of dinos to level up and get ready for the boss fight. Not to forget that time was running out. So my plan was to build a few XP farms using the same sort of design as my Svaltovheim gameplay. It surely worked wonders there. I 
was hoping it would do the same here. I started with a test build, just to see if things would go according to plan. It's a good thing too, as I was able to find a floor. You see, the Megatheriums didn't want to attack their young. The Thalus did though, so I went ahead and built another XP farm and bred more Megas to continue with leveling my Thalus. Seems like I would have to use another way to level my Megatheriums. While waiting for my Thalus to level, and also the fact that I had to stay close by for them to actually work, I decided to complete my army-like compound look. It was something I had in mind for a long time now. I just didn't want to do it. It was just an insane task. But anyways, what I wanted to do was build a fence around my base and use spikes to imitate the barbed wire look that goes on top of the fence. Yeah, I know, a whole lot of unnecessary crap. But to be honest, it was just for the aesthetics, or at least somewhat. So for the next couple of days, I spent my time working on this grueling task, collecting all of the resources and crafting all of the structures needed for this build. You know what? At least I completed it. But then again, I never ever want to do this again. You got that? Screep! Day 90 was kind of a chill day. After that uh, insane build, I thought I earned myself an off day. So I just hung around base and kept an eye on my Thalas, making sure to level them and swap them out if needed. Alrighty, it was time to take care of my Megatheriums. Off to the sand dunes to level them up. And that was done by taking out those death worms. It was that easy. They gave a whole lot of XP points. I just camped nearby and farmed up those death worms to get my Megatheriums a ton of juicy XP. Day 97, while waiting for the loss of my Thalus to level up, I went ahead preparing for the boss fight, getting the last few things that I needed and also I went out to get some resources to repair my gear. Yeah, it's almost time peeps, almost time. Day 98, I had a few days left before fighting the boss and also I had to wait for my dinos to heal. So I was like, why waste this time, right? I decided I wanted to try my luck once again in the wyvern trench. So off I went searching for an egg. Lo and behold, I had hit the freaking jackpot. I found a level 2520 egg. No time wasting here, man. I stole it and flew off to base as soon as I could. Once at base, I immediately started hatching the egg. And later on that day, out popped three wyverns that were not level 2500 plus. What a shame. Oh yeah, I just remembered. I needed to collect some wyvern talons for the boss tribute. So on day 99, I spent my time farming wyvern talons. Day 100, it was time to take on the Alpha Manticore and I had chosen to go with an army of megatheriums and a wyvern. I wasn't quite sure if the wyvern could actually go into the boss arena, though I had to try. Let me just say, it was a decision that ultimately saved my butt. And so so the battle for ultimate supremacy began. I noticed right from the get-go that my wyvern was going to be key as it was doing major damage to the manticore with its special ability. However, the manticore was quite good at evading my attacks. Not to mention the wyvern was pretty difficult to control. Well as for my megatherium army, geez, those guys were a bunch of total screebs. It seems that the normal attacks were scaled down or something. At least they kept the manticore's minions busy. That bought me time to focus on taking out the manticore itself. The fight between the manticore and my wyvern was quite intense. We both shared poison attacks after poison attack. The only problem with that was the boss's attack had an effect on my wyvern. Its torpor was increasing and with every new attack it rose even higher. I had to end this fight fast. I had to be more clinical or I was toast. So I turned on my game face and pressed on attack after attack poison gases were everywhere torpor was still rising i started to freak out but just then i realized the mantico was one shot away from meeting its doom i pulled myself together lined my shot and boom it was pretty much nighty night manticore once again huge thanks to hero wars for sponsoring this video and to you for watching peace